Well, good afternoon. This is Michael again from beautiful, sunny, gorgeous Scottsdale, Arizona. And uh, I have a few things to talk to you about. You know, I just had a conversation with one of my investors uh, just uh, just uh, late yesterday afternoon. We were talking about what's going to happen in the future. There's really two things that, that, that concern me. One, one are cycles. You know, I've learned in my life that nothing is linear. Everything seems to go in, in a cycle. It goes from spring to summer to autumn to fall. So um, we have a real estate cycle that's really, um, if you chart it, uh, you, can, there's, you can go to all kinds of books. You can take all kinds of uh, articles that are written. You can go Google this. But it's about 18 to 19 years long. Um, I think everybody can say we probably bottomed in 2008, 2009. So if it's 18 years, our cycle is going to go till probably 2026, 20, 2027. 20, and uh, that's when we'll, uh, we'll bottom again. So uh, as a group, as uh, my investors, we're buying properties uh, to accumulate for the 2023, 2024 time frame, in which case we're going to go ahead and take a really hard look at uh, the economy and where, where we are and what we're doing. And we'll probably uh, sell some of our properties or, uh, or do something with them. And uh, we're accumulating till then. In the meantime, we're enjoying cash flow. So here in Scottsdale, it's just been pretty doggone incredible. Uh, we are a recipient of a lot of people who are leaving California. So uh, we're the number one uh, county in America. We gained 85,000 net uh, uh, people moved to the Valley of the Sun, moved to, actually moved to Maricopa County uh, last year. Uh, the closest one was Harris uh, County in uh, Houston, Texas. So they got fifty six thousand. We got eighty five. So it just outstripped them by uh, by leaps and bounds. Uh, we have Californians coming. I was told anecdotally. I don't know if I've seen this, but someone told me that uh, the Department of Motor Vehicles had uh, a month where they had nine thousand Californians surrender their light driver's licenses and get Arizona licenses in one month. So there's a lot of people leaving California, and of course we've talked about that uh, ad infinitum. Uh, but a couple of things here. So rents in uh, Maricopa County, Scottsdale, Phoenix, Peoria, Chandler, Gilbert, uh, um, uh, Avondale, uh, Glendale, are, the rents are just uh, are just going up. Of course, we were very, very low on the chart anyway. Um, we were way below the national average, so there's an awful lot of room to move up. But they moved up nicely, and of course, that's uh, that's great for our uh, cash flow, and it's great for our returns. So all my investors are just absolutely ecstatic. Now, here's the question. There's a couple things that we need to talk about. Number one is that we do think, I, I do think that there's a, a correction coming. It probably will coincide with whatever uh, whatever happens in the stock and bond market. You know, uh, real estate is not very well correlated with uh, with Wall Street, so a uh, crash on Wall Street doesn't necessarily mean you're going to have a crash in, in real estate because it's local. And, it's, and, you know, real estate is a use factor. You know, it's one of those basic commodities. You need food, shelter, and water. So... Uh, you know, you gotta have a place to live, and if you're not gonna pay your, uh, if you're not gonna pay your uh, uh, rent, it's the last bill that you're not gonna pay because you need to put a roof over your family's head. So we, so we feel pretty comfortable, and of course, um, as the economy, uh, you know, accelerates and it looks like we're getting up to a point where it's a tipping point, or we really get up to the very, very top of this, and it starts to get in risk area, I get much more conservative, and we've been buying nothing but uh, entry level, very affordable homes, stuff that uh, everybody's looking for, and of course, they've just been renting overnight. But now, I do think we're going to have a correction coming. You know, every every uh, every 19-year period in the real estate industry does have a correction. Sometimes it has two corrections. Could be a steep correction. You know, in 1981, uh, when Paul Volcker was uh, uh, was chairman of the uh, Federal Reserve, it was a really steep correction. That was a pretty tough correction. It was a tremendous buying opportunity. All, all these corrections uh, end up being uh, phenomenal buying opportunities. It's just really scary at the time. Tell people that it's time to buy. Uh, you know, they, they think there's something wrong with you. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's no way I'm going to spend my money, but really, it's the correct thing to do is to, to start buying because you know these the, these uh, always cycle. They come back up and they go and they uh, and they, they they go on. And then we have the commodity cycle, which I think is uh, probably going to bottom this year. So, boy, we've got a housing cycle that's not due until uh, 2025, 26. 
And you remember the last few years are when you really get the big pop. And we're looking at a commodity cycle, and commodity cycle uh, has really been going down. You can just, I mean, copper, iron, ore, coal, uh, aluminum, all the basic building uh, blocks of manufacturing have just uh, gone, you know, just have had terrific uh, losses so that you know and all things end so here we are looking at a, a commodity cycle that's probably going to end and i would say um then it's going to start going up so if it ends you know it doesn't stop it ends and pendulums up and then it starts swinging back up and of course every one of our homes is made out of wood it's made out of aluminum it's made out of copper it's made out of oil products it's made out of metal products it's made out of concrete all the basic commodities that have enjoyed uh, lower prices are going to start looking at much, much higher prices. And much higher prices are probably going to drive the basic components of, of housing up, which is why we're accumulating houses. Not only do we want the cash flow and the rent's been just terrific. I mean, we, we, you, can't, you, can't spend, you can't spend value. You can, however, spend your cash flow. So our cash flow has just been right off the charts. So we're really happy about that. But the question then becomes, if we're going to have a correction, should we quit buying? And that's, I get this question all the time, and this is, really, this is a really hard thing to answer. Here's what I can tell you from experience, is if you're going to finance, number one, the lenders do not want to, you know, when things start getting tough, the lenders get tough. They don't want to lend money. They get really, really risk adverse. So if you um, want to borrow money, they don't necessarily want to give it to you. So if you have any kind of accumulated properties, oftentimes they don't want it you to accumulate anymore. And that's really the best time to buy. Uh, the other thing is that when it's the best time to buy, often you're scared. So when you're scared, a lot of people don't want to, you know, they want to, the, the natural instinct is to stay put and, and not risk. Really, when you get to that point, that's really when you should go ahead and uh, and buy. It's always been a way in the past. It's been scary. It's been really, really scary. I mean, I've been scared myself. Thank God, I hope this is the right thing I'm doing. I'm buying these properties. Turn out to be phenomenal. I mean, it, I should want more. But it, when you're right in the trenches, it's very hard. So I'm going to say that I would advocate if you're going to finance these properties. In other words, if you're going to put 25 or 30% down, we're still going to get a cash flow on them. So if you're going to put 25 or 30% down, we are looking at long-term rates that are just absolutely outstanding. So um, I would say, sure, let's be a little conservative about it. But I would say we can still go ahead and buy good properties that are cash flowing, that are good opportunities in the, in the marketplace. Sure, we, we want to add to our portfolio. I don't think this is a time to, to get uh, aggressive at all. But I think we have a program we should be, we should be dollar cost averaging or house cost averaging so that we are buying at least one property a year. I think there's going to be next year, the year afterwards, we're going to buy, want to buy as many properties as we can. But I'm going to tell you, you're going to be afraid to do that. So, because uh, I think the economy is going to be really, really tough. But I think by the time we hit 2019, 2020, I think you start seeing uh, huge increases in, in properties. I, I, I think they're going to be just astronomical uh, prices. Now, you might be paying 8 or $9 per gallon of gas, too. I mean, you know, bread could be costing you 7 or $8. Uh, but that could drive prices of houses uh, incredibly higher, rents incredibly higher. And if you don't have them, uh, they're going to be tougher to to acquire. So I would say let's get them while it's reasonable. But let's be let's be smart about it. Let's let's not go hog wild. Uh, and the other thing is if 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 what happens, uh, what I think is going to happen happens, which I, I'm pretty sure is going to happen. I, I don't see how we can possibly wait. You know, I think we're going to have a recession. I think it's going to be reasonably. Um, uh, severe recession. I, I, I think there's a lot of excesses that have to be wrung out of the economy, and the longer it takes to wring them out, the tougher the economy, you know, the uh, downturn could be. We're going to need that cash flow. We're going to need the cash flow of our properties. Last time we went through the Great Recession, and we were here in Phoenix. And I remember Phoenix was like the poster child for America. It's the like the, the worst place you could possibly be in a real estate investor. Um, and uh, sure, the properties lost value. If you had to sell them, then you were going to sell them at a pretty big discount from where they were. However, rents rents weren't really uh, discounted too terribly much. Rents, um, you know, we lost a little bit on rent. Uh, we made it up on vacancy fact. We made it up on uh, maintenance, and eventually made it up on taxes. So uh, our turnovers dropped off to next to nothing. So. Um, really, maybe maybe five, six, seven percent, eight percent 
differential. It's pretty, pretty nominal. So if we're really not looking to sell these things until 2023 or 2024, what happens in the next five or six years really is, is immaterial to us. We just want to make sure that, that our, our properties are full and we get to take the cash flow. So when you're my age, you know, you cannot sell your stock certificates. You can sell the dividends. But let me tell you, that we're getting, we're getting, we're getting double what you guys are getting on, on dividends, and we're growing it. So last year's rent, last year's rent is up ten or fifteen percent. So our cash flow is up hugely, hugely. So you can't do that on fixed income. You know, you get a, you get an annuity that's going to pay you, you know, five hundred dollars a month. Then we get rents that pay you five hundred dollars a month uh, last year, and this year they're paying you six fifty. And next year you might be paying you seven fifty. So that's that's the type of things that we're looking at. So, um, you know, those, those are all really, really good things. So, and when you get that kind of cash flow that's coming through, uh, it mitigates downturns. So uh, maybe if you're a businessman, your business isn't quite as good as it should be because there's a recession on, but your rents keep coming in. So your standard of life does not change. And I believe, I firmly believe, I want you to listen to this. I firmly believe here in Maricopa County, we're the number one county in America here in Maricopa County, generational wealth will be made in the next 10 years. People will make fortunes here, fortunes that you can leave to your kids, your grandkids, your great great grandkids, and a legacy for generations to come because I think there's going to be really, really uh, fortunes made here in, in town. So listen, as always, I wish you my very best. You're welcome to go ahead and call me or contact me. Uh, uh, we have a whole program here set up. Uh, you don't have to be uh, the landlord. You can be just be the investor. You don't even have to come here if you don't want to. I'm a fiduciary. I will handle all your uh, needs. I'll take care of absolutely everything for you. We'll send you pictures. We've got property managers. Uh, we've got people. We've got tenants standing in line to buy, buy pro to rent properties. So, um, you know, if you have any uh, any concerns at all, and here, let me just leave you with this. Uh, there's a risk elsewhere in the marketplace. It's safer in this asset, so maybe it's time to reallocate some. So, listen, my very best to you guys. Uh, give me a call if you need me. Bye-bye now.